Hello everyone and welcome back. Okay, so let's try to solve this problem. So what do we have here? Well, we have a box that's being pulled by a low P and we're gonna have a stack coefficient of friction of 0.25. What I wanna know is will this box tip or will it slide first? It's not that it's really easy to figure out. Now, here's the thing. Only one of those cases will be true if we gradually increase the force we're applying. We'll either hit tipping first or sliding first, one or the other. Um, so honestly, it's just kind of good to guess. You'll have to calculate both and you just see which one is less. Which one has the lower force required? That's the one that's gonna happen. So let's do this. So first we'll go ahead and calculate it like it's going to tip. So when it tips, you can imagine that you're zooming in right here on this corner. What you're going to see is that that corner is just going to barely begin to lift off the ground at that very, very small angle. And when that happens, all my normal force and frictional force is going to be applied here at that corner. Okay, so normal force and frictional force. That's important because when it's tipping, we don't actually know if it's reached its max frictional force. It might be that it just happens to tip over. Like if we were to apply force at a different position, maybe it wouldn't tip. It would slide. Um, but we don't know if it's reached max frictional force. We can only use this as F, which is an unknown. So we have our weight pressing down, that's 250 pounds. And we have that force P right here, which is at an angle of 25 degrees. Okie doke. So with that, we can actually solve for what we want because we only care about the load P. We don't care about the frictional force or the normal force for this problem. Only the load P. So I'm going to take my moment around this point to get rid of the other two unknowns. And so some of the moments is going to be equal to 250. Oh, I didn't find those distances. That's 1.5 and that's 4. 250 times 1.5 minus P. And that's going to be cosine 25 because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine of 25 times 4. And if I solve, what do I get? I get that it's equal to 103.5 pounds. Okay, so for tipping, I'll put that T right here, it's gonna be equal to 103.5 pounds. Now let's check and see what happens when I am sliding. Now at sliding, I know what my frictional force is, I just don't quite know where it is. It's just kind of distributed along the entire bottom. Okay. So in sliding, I still have most of the things the same. I've got my load P, 25 degree angle, my weight, which is 250. I'm also gonna have this normal force and this frictional force, which are somewhere on the bottom. Note, we don't actually know where they are because this is gonna be, you know, this force right here might cause it to have a little bit more force towards the front. We haven't calculated where they are, what their position would be. So for now, we just have to assume that they're somewhere on the bottom. So that only gives us our sum of forces in the X and some of the forces in the Y, which leaves us with one, two, three unknowns. So are we stuck? We're not actually, because we know if it's about to slide, that in this case, we have reached our max frictional force. And I can replace that with my max frictional force equation. Okay, now with that, I have the ability to solve. Sadly, I have to do some algebra. It's not gonna be super easy. Um, but it's not too terrible either. Let me make a little bit more space by moving that in and out. There we go. So some of the forces in the x direction will equal my frictional force minus the horizontal component of P, so P cosine of 25, and that'll be equal to zero. And some of the forces in the y direction is equal to my normal force minus 250 pounds plus P sine of 25, which is equal to zero. Okay, now if I solve this, what I will get is that P is equal to 61.8 pounds, 61.8 pounds. So let's look at this. For sliding, it's gonna be equal to 61.8 pounds. If I am gradually increasing the force, which of these two conditions do you think happens first? 
So it's quite obvious that it's going to slide before it tips. And so that will be the one that will happen in this case. Based on this load, where it's applied, it would slide before it would tip. Okay, so thank you for listening. I hope this helps you and makes sense. And I'll see all of you next time. Bye-bye.